Welcome to Mobile Home University. This is our teacher, Frank Rolfe. He's made a fortune from trailer parks. So have billionaires like Warren Buffett and Sam Zell. All these people want to become trailer park millionaires too. We tagged along on Frank's tour of trailer parks in Orlando to learn how. Step one, buy a cheap trailer park. Step two, make a few renovations. Step three, jack up the rent. Step four, repeat. Now guys, like I tell you, this park, I believe, is a sex offender park. Everyone in here is a sex offender. I could be wrong. <laughs> We're going to find out, but I think that's the deal on this one. So stay together as a herd, okay? Here we go. Yeah, let's start walking. Let's walk down here. This home looks like Architectural Digest, right? This could be on the cover of, like, you know, Dwell Magazine or something. Pink house here. If you wash that down with bleach... It looks like new again. A lot of park ambiance aesthetics is merely Hollywood set design. It's just a matter of paint and just some creative thought. Oh, okay. She, she's the owner of the park, and so maybe give them a history of the park, possibly, oh, sure. and, and then they can ask you questions about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So 20 years ago, I started in taking in can mostly, con it's all convicted felons. We have a few that are not. And now I bought last year a park down the street, got rid of all the families, the drug dealers, the prostitutes, bringing convicted felons. And then I bought the property across the way. So I have some handouts for you. 100% occupied or? Oh, we are 1,000% occupied. Okay. We have one or two or three people per trailer because <clears throat> the guys have no place to go. This is a great property because we're on the bus line. You're saying if you take in sex offenders, yeah. you get all you want. So make sure you're on a bus line. Well, it's easy because they don't have cars. They don't have no, no, well, all right. What's now, the turnover? When they die. Stay forever. stay forever. They have no place to go. Frank doesn't own any sex offender parks, but he brings his students around so they can see lots of different types of investment. How long have you lived in a trailer park? 18 years. How much do you pay? It's $3.35 a month. I mean, that's because I own my place. You know, right. I'm sure people that are renting, these, a lot of these people in here are you know, really getting robbed. They're paying, they, what they do is these people buy these trailers and then they divide them up, put like three bedrooms in them and charge each person $500 a month. Really? Yeah, so they're they're definitely making some bread off of the place, you know. Oh. Taking it, basically what they're doing is taking advantage of the sex offenders because they got nowhere else to live and they got no choice to pay but $500 a month for a bedroom. And what did you feel about the sex offender park? I thought it was a brilliant idea. Why? Brilliant idea. Why? Brilliant. Why? Why? Because these people need a place to live and they don't want to mess around. They got to live somewhere. Mm. And so you combine them and confine them in a certain place. They don't go out to hurt people. It's a, I think it's a community service mm -hmm. because if not, they'll be in your neighborhood. Frank's been running Mobile Home University for seven years and students pay $2,000 for the weekend. Family parks tend to have higher expenses. You have more people in the households. They use more water, they wash cars, whatever. But the big thing is they can really tolerate rent increases really well. So the family parks are our favorite park. Almost all of the parks we have, with rare exceptions, are all family parks. And it pretty much works throughout America because there's so much need for affordable housing right now. It didn't work at all back in the 50s and 60s. There were no poor people. So basically, you couldn't make it work. Today, there's a huge number of poor people, and there's more poor people like every day. In Frank's parks, families often own their trailers. Moving a trailer costs thousands of dollars. So when the rent goes up, they can't afford to move. What's the first thing you do when you've got a new park? You know, when, we, when we buy a park, we typically go out and we make, with, with a pad of paper, we walk around the thing three, three million times and we make a list of everything wrong with it. And the, the initial list can be hundreds of items long. And then over time, you'll go back to the park and your list is going down and down and down until you end up with just five items or something. And then you know you're nearing the end of the job. And then you put up the rent. Yeah, well, raising the rent is typically part of, of the day one purchase because often the mom and pop has not raised the rent in years, so they're far below market. But did you feel bad at all with some of these people on Social Security or earning minimum wage and then suddenly they've got to pay double the money? In you know, I didn't, didn't feel badly about it again because I'm bringing it to market and I don't dictate what the market is. Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, if we hadn't raised the rent, the park wouldn't exist because it would have been made into a different use. 
Frank's company is the 10th biggest owner of trailer parks in America. The biggest player is Sam Zell, and he's worth almost $5 billion. The problem is that the world and this country should not talk about envy of the 1%. It should talk about emulating the 1%. We went to one of his senior parks in Orlando. People we spoke to really liked living there, but we noticed a lot of the trailers were for sale. Do you think it's right that someone so rich should be owning mobile homes and putting the rent up every year? Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. He's a businessman. And then do you think you'll stay here? Do you like it? Uh, no, no. I got to move. Why? Uh, because I can't afford it. I just think paying 560 bucks just for having your trailer here mm. is quite a bit of money for a lot of rent. These people are selling their trailers for $100. Really? Oh, yeah. And some of them are giving them away. Because of the, they can't get anyone to buy them. They can't get nobody to buy them. Because of the rent, the ground rent. The ground, yep. So they're trapped. And they're, actually, they are. Mm. OK, so at any rate, you want to hear a good mobile home park story? This is back when I had rentals. I get a call from somebody that their toilet will not flush. So I call a plumber, he goes down there, he comes back and says, this is not that the toilet is broken. This is not that you have a stoppage in your line. There is no line. When you go to the bathroom, it falls on the ground underneath the trailer. And in about 30 years, it's grown into a pile, 14 by 14 wide, that has tap, topped off like a pyramid, the toilet itself. That's the stuff you find in the mobile home park business, right? That was like in my first, first few weeks at my park. Okay, we're now at her second park. We're getting out again. So here we are. How does this compare to your parks, your trailers? I've never been in any of ours. <laughs> well, all of ours are, are owned by the individuals. And as, that's what we've learned is that's the way to go. What you're trying to do is provide the guy that hasn't got, got any money, a place to live. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot more poor people than there are rich people. So and, and they're not making any more trailer parks. You wouldn't uh, want to have to deal with doing this up. I don't know that I want to deal with any of this, but but the, the, the economics are compelling. It's the, what's that thing? Uh, um, sell to the masses, make with the classes, maybe. I don't yeah. know if this is the deal. Okay. That's, that's my take on yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Would but you live here? <laughs> no, I wouldn't live here. What do you think about, you know, this this tour we're on is, is all quite rich people that are going around the country buying up parks and then putting the rents up because they know that it costs you a lot to move. I First haven't had that it. one yet. How would you feel about if a billionaire came here and bought well, the Well, I wouldn't like it because I couldn't afford it, for yeah. one. You know I mean, I'm on a, like I said, I'm on a fixed income. And do you think it's right that people really really rich already want to well, squeeze? Well, I, I understand a business business aspect of it, but as far as the right, no, I don't agree with it. How much are you paying now for your place? Uh, 550 And how much is your um, disability income? You see? 700. So it doesn't leave you much change? Nope. And if they came here and they decided... Right. I would have to find another low rent place to move to. And are there, are there other low places? Not many. Not many at all. I'd probably end up having to be homeless. So yeah. Say trailer park. Trailer park. Trailer park. Trailer park. <laughs> Say trailer park again. <laughs> Just amazing things that people throw out, you know, people just don't want. I've been with the New York City Department of Sanitation for the last 34 years. I started collecting about 29 years ago.